Hi there, it's Kevin with Gonro Games here with August 2022's top five products that I think are good buys. So these are non-magic products. These are just products that I think are really fun. I have actually purchased them myself and I can give my letter of recommendation or my seal of excellence, whatever you want to call it, for these products. So without further ado, let's start off with a game that I've got into recently. Yeah, I know. I said I'd never get into Pokemon, but here I am playing some Pokemon and I actually started my experience with exactly this product. So this is an Astral Radiance Build and Battle Stadium. This is meant for two players. How we did uh, our league for Pokemon is we open up an entire Build and Battle Stadium and it built a deck out of the cards within. So again, these are meant for two players because what they have is they have two of these um, Build and Battle boxes. They're kind of like pre-release kits. They have six packs in them. So basically this is the contents of them. So you get like a seated pack. It's gonna have two different uh, energy types in this. So this one's gonna be steel and something else in it. And then you're gonna get six packs and you're supposed to build a, um, a deck out of those. And then they have, I believe two prize packs is how this works in here. So they have two extra packs that come uh, loose in this build and battle stadium. And then they come with uh, kind of the damage counters, the dice and the poison counters uh, to uh, work with your cards. So it's basically for two players, this is everything you need to get going into Pokemon. And like I said, I think it's the perfect amount of cards to build one deck. So if you get two build and battle stadiums, I think it's a better experience than one build and battle. Because what we've 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 kind of figured out is just one build and battle doesn't seem to be enough trainers and enough cards that actually work with your seated pack to actually make a viable deck. And Pokemon, the the, the kind of the problem with Pokemon uh, that I don't think Magic suffers from is Magic is kind of fun. Throughout all levels of experience, you can pick up an intro deck all the way to a legacy deck, and I think it's a pretty good experience. Pokemon is kind of miserable on both ends of the spectrum. I think if you are just playing with like a build and battle or even less limited, like a draft, it's it's pretty miserable because there's just not enough trainers to actually make it. So you, it's very clunky. If, if you're familiar with Pokemon, you're trying to evolve your Pokemon, you're trying to get your Pokemon off your bench with energy to attack, and you get just a bunch of just terrible cards, or, or a lot of the games with just build and battles just end up being um, one player finds the right energy to put on their Pokemon and just runs away at the game. So I think just uh, having two build and battles, just this build and battle stadium with for one player is the perfect amount. It feels like you're playing a good game. You're not going crazy like a, a constructed game of Pokemon where it's the ex exact opposite of the spectrum where every game is the exact same because uh, the trainers are just so efficient of getting exactly what you need. So this is a pretty fun experience. We've done a league with these. So we're on like week three. Uh, we had a pack per week or a pack every three losses uh, for our pool and that keeps it kind of competitive so if you're looking like a a decent way to get into pokemon again this is meant for two players it's 40 dollars, i think is the patron price these msrp for like 60 bucks i believe for build and battle stadiums uh but you get pretty good value out of this you get the, like so the two kits the two extra packs the block of energy to use uh, the dice and whatnot in a deck box to to hold everything so it's a really really good uh, set you can pre-order all the new sets with build and battles um i don't really do pokemon pre-orders as much as i used to uh just because it's just so miserable to try to get exactly what i need from distributors how it works right now it's distributors just like offer me product and then i say yes or no and take it uh so um build and battle stadiums though I recommend this is the best way to get into Pokemon. Astro Radiance was a really fun set too. I think there's some pretty good mechanics. And I don't have nothing really compare it to because I haven't played Pokemon for like three years. I played on the app just to try to learn it as a store owner. Just to, you know, we were going to try to, I think you have to have like a judge or something to get it going. And then I just kind of lost interest because it was such a miserable experience playing Constructed. So um, yeah, anyway, I, can't, I I really like this set. Really like these, these build and battle stadiums. Kind of wish Magic would come out a product similar to this. Uh, but there you have it. That is my Pokemon pick for the month. Speaking of another collectible card game that I'm really enjoying, this is Uprising. Really love the mechanics out of Uprising. Um, this was a box I did for the channel, so I still got it open. Um, had some pretty good cards in here for uh, the different type of characters that are included. I do have played both the Ninja and the Illusionist. I think they're really fun, fun mechanically speaking. Really like the uh, kind of the, um, yeah, the... The, the ways both them attack, it gives a ni nice complexity to the game and really well done set. So why I'm showcasing this is Uprising was very hard to get at one point in time. I did not get my requested amount uh, for release for Uprising. So um, I'm uh, tickled pink now that these are available to order. And I think the cost is like 56 bucks for Uprising. Um, Flesh and Blood is still going through a little bit of growing pains. I've talked about it on uh, some of my other channels how... Uh, speculators kind of, they ruined, 
the the economy, the market of the game, and then it leaves a bad place in the ta- the player's mouths and invested in cards for their decks, as well as Stormers having a hard time selling the product. And so we're having kind of a lull with Flesh and Blood just due to that. But if you take that away, the gameplay experience is still good. They still have a rabid fan base. The the uh, equivalent to Grand Prix, I can't remember what they call them, the calling, or uh, I can't remember what the exact uh, well, um, jargon they use for uh, for Flesh and Blood. They still get like around a thousand to two thousand people that show up to uh, any given one of these tournaments in like you know like the Dallas type size cities, like the bigger cities. That's pretty good. It took Magic a long time to hit those type of numbers. And so this game does have legs. It's very fun. It's my second favorite card game. Um, It it offers like a neat little uh, experience for a, you know, a TCG. And I highly suggest that if you haven't tried Flesh and Blood, that you definitely give it a try. And there are like intro decks and starter decks and things like that, that you can purchase. I'm just saying Flesh and Blood Uprising is now available. I think it's a great buy right now for August, 2022. My last game on the list, I think I've showcased this in a trilogy form uh, because Century Spice Road can be played in a trilogy, but this is my favorite one out of the series, and it is just a cheap, cheap board game right now because I think that they switched packaging, so I was able to buy out a lot of this older packaging for the Century Spice Roads, so it's 20 bucks. It's just 20 bucks for one of the most played games here at Gonro Games. So Century Spice Roads just is a quick kind of deck building s game. You start out with two cards. One is uh, generate two resources of, of yellow resources, which I believe is like corn. Nope, it's turmeric. Turmeric, and then the other one here, this other card, this other merchant you have in your hand, upgrades two of the spices to a better spice. So turmeric can turn into saffron, saffron into cardamom, and then cardamom into cinnamon. So uh, what you do in the game is eventually you're trying to buy these uh, trade routes. And this is exactly what they cost. So this one costs you know, one yellow, one red, one green and three brown um, to then claim this trade route and you get 20 points for them. And then when someone has either, depending on player count, five or six of these, the game ends. And so how you build up to that is on your turn, you can either play a card like one of your, your starting cards here, or you can recruit a merchant that's out on the merchant field and say like this one, it upgrades two green into two brown. And so you could play that upgrade and eventually you will have, you have this little player board that you start with uh, to hold your little resources on here. And eventually you get to uh, uh, then spend these for the trade routes. And it's just like a nicely economy game. It plays very smoothly, has a lot of replayability. It gets to the table very, very often here at Gone Rogue Games. And so if you're looking to start a board game collection or just uh, looking to you know, have a fun little board game, I cannot recommend this game enough. Century Spice Rose or Century Golem is a different skin of the same game. Um, it is, it's, it's very, very fun. It's a great way to kind of test if you might be interested in board games, uh, because it's a light game. It's easy to learn. Um, and I don't know if you're a magic player, I highly recommend to to check out board games. I think you're missing out on a huge gaming experience. If you haven't checked out board games, what I like to say is there's a board game for everyone. I'm not into like the Arkham horrors or the, 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 uh, gloom havens or these big story-based games. They bore me. And I'm also not into like, uh, a lot of the party type games or the monopolies or the you know the classic type games it wasn't until i was introduced to, to games like century spice roads that i really got into board games so if you you were like me and for years kind of i, I turned my nose up to board gamers like why play that trash when there's magic like magic is just such a better experience uh i i've basically uh what's the saying eaten crow uh for that now because i think i enjoy board game night more than any magic experience now and i'm always looking forward to learning new games and testing out games and 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 whatnot so this is one of my favorites can't recommend it enough century spice road uh 20 bucks super cheap and i put it in wrong so i have to figure out how to put this game back in so it fits all right, now on it to a couple of the accessories. So I've, I've shielded these before. These are generic penny sleeves. Currently right now I can do three for two bucks or 60 bucks for a whole case of 100 is the, the cost of these suckers. These are better than Ultra Pro. They are more durable. Um, they fit about 10 cards, I think. Let's go ahead and check with some, some uprising of what you can actually fit in these. So they're just great storage sleeves. So... Uh, here at the store, we use tons of storage sleeves. So how I like to sort cards, I don't like to use binders. What I like to do for, for cards, I like to put them in a sleeve of all the same type, and then we put them in a storage box, and then it makes it a lot easier just to grab 
of the cards and then you know grab a card oh this customer's buying this okay there's a, a, a rake of embers it keeps them nice and sturdy these are solid so the ultra pro ones would be a lot more loose and a lot more flimsy for how many cards you can store so i think this one it can easily do 10 let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine so let's try 12 right now 10 11 12. see how tight it is for for 12. uh no 12 12 seems to be fitting perfect too so yeah i'd say 12 is probably the max you can put in these type of sleeves they're great to ship cards in um again great to store cards in uh, that's the process right now. If I'm, I'm moving over to from binders to store card storage, um, great to put tokens in. Uh, again, just just everyone should have penny sleeves in their arsenal for their collection because you're not going to put perfect fits in binders for all of your your commons and uncommons. And you start to get multiples of the same commons. I mean, they they these are also pretty good just to fit you know play sets. A play set fits nice and snug in there too. And it keeps your cards protected, uh, especially when they're in the boxes. If you just have like commons and commons in a storage box, eventually you're going to start to wear down the sides. If you have them in here, especially their foils, they're going to be uh, uh, perfectly protected. These generic sleeves that whatever uh, brand knocked off, whatever, um, is much better than any other uh, penny sleeve that I've come across right now, including like Ultimate Guard, including BCW, uh, including like Beckett ultra pro these generic ones are the best of the best so have plenty of them to go around like i said 60 dollars for a case or two three for two bucks i believe is the the price that if i did my math right isn't that 66 cents a piece if i man i'm 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 out of it today uh last but not least is babe of uh, dragon shield which is my favorite outside matte sleeve has come up with more colors of these dual mats and so they've come up with this gray uh gray dual mat uh, so what's cool about dual mats, let's just open this up. I'm sure I'll be able to use these for a draft or someone which wants to purchase them. this one that's been tested. Let me know and I'll send it to you. Everything will be fine with it. But these ones are great here as they dual mat means they have that black backing. So cards don't see through. So this was traditionally a color like gray had the problem with like if you have a double space card, you would see through it uh, with the sleeve. But now here's a double face card here. Uh, you're not going to be able to see through the back. So it's still a light color that you can use that no longer has the issue of being able to see what card is coming up. Uh, they fit very well with perfect fits. So let me grab a perfect fit here. That's a hard perfect fit. I do not recommend hard perfect fits. I can't stand them. Oh, no, that's a hard perfect fit. What is this one? No, this one's not a hard perfect fit. So here's a perfect fit. Uh, perfect fit goes in on the card and then you can fit it right in there. And Dragon Shields are just top notch top-notch sleeve you don't see through it they have come up with like crypt i'm trying to think of the other clothes peach crypt eucalyptus uh there's a lot of these like lighter colors like the the pastels are the lighter colors that typically you could see through with the old matte ones um you do not see through these suckers if uh um, I, I remember it was like, what I get the other day? I uh, crimson, I could see through the crimson sleeves. So I'm really liking these du dual matte sleeves. They are a little bit more pricey. You think they're a buck or two more pricey. It's like nine bucks for these suckers rather than the seven bucks for regular dragon shields, but it's still top notch. In fact, I think these shuffle filler are comparable with matter or even a little bit better than the, just the dragon shield matte ones. So again, this one is crypt from uh, dragon shield for the matte dual matte sleeves there you have it those are my top five products this month that i think are great buys again if you're interested in pokemon great way to get into it is the build and battle stadium the flesh and blood uprising can't beat the set it's one of the uh, one of my favorite sets so far that i've played with flesh and blood the mechanics are great the century spice road and this the penny sleeves and then the dragon shield sleeves so i am trying to be doing more videos like this just reviewing products doing like quick reviews if you want to sponsor a video like this and hey or if you see something hey kevin do you still have that that you opened on camera i might give you a little bit of a discount to send it off to you uh, as i want to keep these video series going if you do enjoy these videos i highly encourage you to go check out the patreon you get discounts on not just magic the gathering but across the board whatever i can get it for is what you get it for um and if you are not really interested in joining the patreon but still like the content still like the review give me a like give me a subscribe give me a share give me a comment give me all that good stuff and let's get this channel growing this has been kevin with gone Roll games thanks for watching